As Oregon's fall season ramps up, a stunning sunny workday is rare. And welcome. So I guess this board's lucky. It doesn't go in the jump heap. Dwight Sheets is the chief project foreman at a site where volunteers are burning daylight with little time to waste on a job that links 80 years of prized Oregon history to the Sandy Am Pass Ski Area Lodge. It was built to support Hoodoo Ski Area, which was uh, began in 1938. It was built in this location so that it would be closer uh, to the Hoodoo Butte. The first years, uh, the lodge had many guests, and it was very uh, commonly full of skiers who were enjoying this new sport. Sandy Am Pass Ski Lodge is one of a handful of rustic projects built in the 1930s. This was an era of big timber and stone buildings with cozy interiors. Places like Honeyman State Park at the Oregon Dunes, South Falls Lodge at Silver Falls State Park, and scores of other large and small Civilian Conservation Corps projects that put thousands of young men to work across Oregon. It was one of the later lodges built, and so in 1940, so you're getting pretty late in the CCC period. It didn't have a lot of the uh, sort of craftsmanship of the metalwork and, and, and things like that. It was just constantly full of people. It's the second largest to Timberline, and it's the only one not in operation. So we're changing that. Dwight and Susan Sheets are passionate protectors of Oregon's past. They fell in love with the Sandy Am Lodge story, even remember visiting it decades ago as kids. Susan recalls their heartbreak seeing it in 2016, even took this snapshot. It was a run-down wreck that had been closed by decay for 30 years. And yet, she remembers they felt inspired. We got to do this. We got to bring it back. So the duo embarked on nothing short of a crusade to save Sandy Am Ski Lodge. They received a special use permit from the Forest Service, formed a nonprofit friends group, and sought out dollars wherever they could. So far, they've raised over a million dollars for the project. Not bad for retired teachers who say class is in session every day at Sandy Am Ski Lodge. We just thought this is a wonderful building that needs to be restored and, and come back and be functional but for the community again. The exterior is nearly done and it is impressive especially the towering cedar steps and rails entrance that builder Miguel Medina felt privileged to design. This is the first time I do one with a full cedar logs, which I never build with cedar, which is so nice to, to do. It's so soft and, and beautiful when, when you finish, you know? But yeah, been a pleasure to, to work and try to help as much as I can doing their full restoration. Indoors is a different story and will take more time. Inches of rodent droppings have been cleaned out and so has the rotting ruin from harsh winter weather. We took off all of the uh, siding, all of the paneling inside, and you could literally pull the boards out with your hand. You didn't need any tools um, because they were so rotten. So these are all the originals. Most of them wouldn't even move. They were all seized, so now they all move freely. The interior work begins next year, and there are good reasons to be hopeful. The fireplace is in pretty good shape. We want to use this fireplace a lot. Yeah, it, 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 they had a fire going in here uh, constantly. They can't have a lodge without uh, some kind of a, a fire going. The sheets insist the bones of the building are strong and provide testimony to the Oregon timber harvested right out the front door that was milled by those CCC boys in 1939. It is a building meant to last. This lodge is going to be around when we're gone, and we want people to enjoy it, and we, we want it to be something that uh, lives up to the legacy of the, the CCC and, and what they put into it. We like to say that the Sandy and Pasquee Lodge is coming back with the forest surrounding it. At the Sandy M. Pass Ski Lodge, with photographer Jeff Kastner, Grant McComey, KGW.